Earlier this year, the Fifth Circuit struck down the Trump-era bump stock ban. A few months later, the Sixth Circuit followed suit. And as of early November, the issue is heading to the Supreme Court. This is a topic that people tend to get pretty heated about, but this video isn't particularly concerned with the moral arguments over safety versus freedom. People on both sides of that debate often use more emotional fear-mongering than actual arguments, and I hate that. Instead, I'm going to examine how dangerous bump stocks can actually be, how well a bump stock ban would likely work, and whether it's even a political hill worth dying on. Also, be aware that this video doesn't contain anything graphic, but it does contain a very frank and emotionless discussion of violence and death. If you're sensitive to that kind of emotionally distant analysis of violence, remember that this channel is called Armchair Violence, and this is kind of what I do here. First, for those of you that don't already know, let's briefly address what a bump stock is. A bump stock is an accessory that allows you to fire bullets faster. A semi-automatic firearm fires one bullet each time you squeeze the trigger. What a bump stock does is it allows the firearm to move back and forth. That way, pushing the gun forward makes the trigger hit your finger, and the recoil of the gun resets it. By applying constant forward pressure, this allows you to pull the trigger faster than if you were just moving your finger back and forth. Here's a clip of a normal semi-automatic. And here's a clip of a bump stock shooting. And yes, all of these clips are from other channels because I don't actually own a gun. Essentially, bump stocks allow a gun to fire faster at the cost of decreased accuracy because it's kind of hard to aim a gun and have a good sight picture when it's moving around like a shake weight. Bump stocks have been around for a while, but they became controversial after the Las Vegas shooting, in which this idiot killed 60 people and reportedly used a bump stock during the attack. Since March of 2019, the ATF has considered bump stocks to be machine guns, which are super illegal to own. However, while creating a decent machine gun requires some specialized knowledge and tools, Making a bump stock really doesn't. Bump stocks are just solid pieces of plastic. If you own a 3D printer, you can have a bump stock in a matter of hours. And because of the rapidly shifting legality, this is filled with concrete. It's functionally a paperweight. Plus, I don't even own a gun, nor do I own a 3D printer to make more. But a lot of other people do own 3D printers and can easily make as many as they want in a way that's virtually impossible to track. Now, you might be thinking that 3D printers are still a niche hobby that someone planning a mass shooting likely wouldn't have access to. And first of all, you're wrong. Many 3D printers are cheaper than the rifle that a bump stock would even attach to, and they're completely unregulated. But even if they were hard to get, you also better hope that criminals don't have access to a hardware store because you can just make a bump stock out of PVC pipe. And this is also filled with concrete, by the way, just in case you were wondering. But you don't even need a bump stock to bump fire. It's also a technique that anyone can do. You can bump fire an unmodified gun with a belt, a piece of string, or even just your finger. And increasing a gun's rate of fire can also be achieved with a Glock switch, a coat hanger, a file, or any number of other methods. Taking bump stocks off the shelves does not actually stop people from obtaining bump stocks. And if you did stop people from obtaining bump stocks, it still doesn't stop people from firing faster. The only way to completely stop people from bump firing is to classify the human index finger as a machine gun and ban it. Call me sentimental, but I don't really want the government to confiscate my finger. I'm rather attached to it. Now, I'm sure that all of this information has been thoroughly explored by actual gun channels, but I want to ask one additional question that often gets forgotten in the endless political debate. Does having a bump stock even make a difference? Is it more lethal, or is it just a novelty? Well, to address this question, it's worth noting a few things. First of all, while a bump stock does allow you to fire much faster, the movement of the gun means that it's likely going to be significantly less accurate than an automatic weapon. Even at slower firing rates, based on the general consensus of recreational shooters that have used bump stocks, the trade-off in accuracy is fairly severe compared to the relatively modest improvement in speed. The rifle with the bump stock is far less accurate and is much more complicated to use than a fully automatic rifle. The semi-auto is way, way more accurate. And this is what I was talking about. Banning the bump fire stock is not gonna do any good. 
And when you coldly look at the numbers, this trade-off really doesn't seem to be a tactical advantage. The Las Vegas shooting, in which a bump stock was likely used, resulted in 60 deaths, making it this country's deadliest mass shooting. The second deadliest mass shooting was at the Pulse nightclub, which resulted in 49 deaths. However, the Pulse nightclub shooter expended 110 rounds, approximately one death for every two and a quarter bullets. The Las Vegas shooter, however, fired 1,135 rounds, resulting in approximately one death for every 19 bullets. The Vegas shooter was, thankfully, far less accurate than most mass shooters tend to be. And this is likely due to the fact that he was over 400 yards away. While that's a perfectly doable shot with a normal rifle, using a bump stock at that range is going to make even pretty decent shooters wildly inaccurate. You can argue that the rapid rate of fire might have still allowed the shooter to take advantage of a target-rich environment, but his rate of fire wasn't actually that rapid. The shooting took place over the span of about 10 minutes. That comes out to a firing rate of roughly 115 rounds per minute, which is entirely possible to do with a normal gun. Jerry Michelek has managed a 12-shot reload in under three seconds, meaning that Jerry could fire his revolver faster than the Vegas shooter's bump stock. Stand by. In this video, VSO Gun Channel fires 320 rounds in about two and a quarter minutes, giving them a firing rate of 142 rounds per minute. That's 27 rounds per minute faster than the Vegas shooter, despite not having a bump stock and only using standard 30 round magazines, while the Vegas shooter apparently had 100 round magazines. And yes, the VSO guys weren't pausing to assess the situation and search for more targets, but that's kind of the point. In real life, machine gun rates of fire are really only used in a suppressing role. When you're firing something that's not firing back, running your gun at full speed is just completely unnecessary and does nothing but waste ammunition. It could even be argued that the Vegas shooter's use of a bump stock resulted in fewer deaths because he likely experienced a drop in accuracy while only maintaining a firing rate that an unmodified gun was already capable of. And this drop in accuracy was massively amplified by the fact that the reciprocating motion of the gun would prevent him from comfortably resting it on a surface or using a bipod, which at 400 yards would normally be a ubiquitous tactic. If the bump stock made a difference at all, it made the shooter less accurate and likely saved lives. Now, if you're at all knowledgeable on guns, this information shouldn't come as any surprise to you. Bump stocks aren't viewed by experts as some legal loophole for a machine gun. They're viewed as a gimmick, a novelty item that makes recreational shooters say, ha ha, gun go brrr. They're not practical for literally anything except the novelty of having tried it. It is not a practical device, but it is one that allows people to experience the simulation of fully automatic fire. Banning them doesn't make shooters less deadly. You can't stop people from bump firing, and if you did, it would only make shooters deadlier. To be honest, the whole political argument is kind of silly. On one hand, there's nothing particularly special about bump stocks, so why would you want to ban them? But on the other hand, there's nothing particularly special about bump stocks, so who cares if they're banned? The smart thing for both sides to do is to use bump stocks as a bargaining chip to get more meaningful concessions. Bump stocks should be nothing more than a strategic poker chip. Instead, they're an issue that both sides seem to be genuinely fighting over, which is just a waste of everyone's time. Because both sides are more concerned with strategic fear-mongering to their voter base than they are with actually addressing the issue.